You're looking to buy a piece of land to start a glamping business, a tiny home business, or even homesteading, but you're not sure how far out from the city you should be. And what are the pros and cons of them? In today's video, I'm gonna answer all of that. I'm even gonna give you an exact distance that I think that you should be away from the city, what I think is the sweet spot. So check out this video, and also I'm gonna be moving quick here, people. I'm not trying to waste your time. Let's dive right into it. Now this is a tough one for me to give advice for because there's so many different options that you can go down, but I'm gonna be as direct as possible. So you potentially could agree with me or you could think I'm a <laughs> about to curse. So you could either agree with me or you could think I'm a bloody fool and let me know down in the comments. I love that hate. Just just rain it on me. Just just go for it. Shout out to this guy. He left so far what I think is the best hate comment I've gotten. So try to beat that in the comments. If you are going to attack me, at least make it funny. Now, the first option is buying land as close to the city as you can get to. That makes a ton of sense. You know, if you are starting a business, people won't have to drive as far of a distance to get to you and for you to get their money out of them. Or if you are living on that land, it'll make it really easy for you to get, you know, from your land to downtown in the city to get to the nearest grocery stores and those types of things. Most likely these regions will have a good population and will have a lot of commerce. So it'll make your life a lot easier. You won't have to drive 30 minutes to the nearest destination. Now, as good as these things may sound, it's a terrible idea. Don't do it. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why. For starters, when you buy land in these regions, you're closer to suburbs or closer to big business, right? And with that, you get a ton of headaches when dealing with local government. Local governments in these more densely populated cities are normally just a hassle, right? They're, they're just a bit of a headache. And the reason being is they have the interests of so many different people in mind. They have the interests of big business, who doesn't wanna allow certain things in the region. They have the interests of uh, you know, people who own houses in the suburbs that are close by. They don't want their property values to, to be touched or worried about. It can get kind of crazy when dealing with these local governments. They are much less likely to allow you to build off grid or handle the work yourself. A lot of the times these places are gonna force you to build and do essentially what they want you to do. When you're a bit further out, you deal with that a lot less. On top of that, when you're buying land, you're buying just that, land, and you will get so much less for your money when you buy close to the city. It's absolutely insane. If you really think about it, look at the price of houses or duplexes or anything along those lines, either in major cities or close to it. If you take away the house that's on top of it, the actual land, it's, it's astronomical, the prices, you'll get less than half an acre, you'll get 0.2, 0.4 of an acre, and it'll cost $100,000, $200,000. Now, yes, there's a house on top of it, but if you're buying land, you should not be paying that much per acre. So you need to change your mindset. You're not out here buying a home. You're buying raw land that you will build something on top of. So think about your budget. It doesn't make financial sense. Then you have your other option, a little further out from the city. Now this is where you can get a bit savvy and really look at the pieces and the plots of land and see what makes sense for you. Now, when you're looking here, you should be looking for a bargain. The goal is to buy land, okay? And lots of it, get as much as you can for the correct price. You're already going off the grid, you're already getting a raw piece of land and maybe you're gonna attach that to the grid later on, but this is where you should start thinking as a savvy shopper and really break things down. You need to think about what's important for you. Do you want land with a lot of trees on it? Do you want land with a lot of water on it? Do you want land with absolutely no running water on it? Or maybe a pond? There's so many different options and this is where you need to talk with yourself and think about what you want to do. If you really don't have any ideas, don't worry, Keep It Tiny's got you. Check out the video on the screen right now. I'll dive right into all of that goodness. All right, I'm not gonna lie. This next option is the option that you should be looking for. You should be trying to find land that is a bit further out from the city, but it checks off all of your particular boxes, okay? If you're gonna get land outside of the city, you're gonna have a car or a means of transportation to get there. And so are your guests. If you're doing a glamping business or a tiny home business, an RV business, your guests are gonna have to have a car to be able to get out there either way. So don't worry about you know the, the little things. Oh, but this one's a little further out. If I was right outside of the city, I would be a lot closer to everybody. Thus, I could make more money or I could charge more. Well, you also have a ton more of competition. Why would I go and stay at your location that's not that far out of the city when I can just stay in the city and spend my hard earned dollars and you know go to that local bar downtown with the IPAs? 
and all that fun city slicker stuff. When you're a little further out, you get more bang for your buck and you're able to get more of what you're looking for. You should be a little bit more selective on what you're looking for. So write down a list to yourself. Are you looking for land with trees on it, not a lot of trees on it, running water, sitting water, a hill, uh, you know, facing north or south or east when you're thinking about what you're gonna build on it. You can get real selective and you can take your time. These plots of land aren't going as fast as you think and there's much more of them. So you can be a lot more selective. Also, when dealing with local government, since it's smaller, and I'm just speaking in generalities here, a lot of the times a little bit further out from the city, local governments will be smaller because the population will be smaller. You get to talk one-on-one -on -one with people, okay? This is that old school outside of the city. Hi, my name is Jamie. This is what I'm trying to build. Can you let me know if this is allowed? And if it's not allowed, how could I make it allowed? Or if it's not allowed, what is allowed? Work with me here, Marge. Come on, let's make this happen. Let's make a deal. So if you're looking for an exact number, that number is about three and a half hours out of the city. That's what I think is the sweet spot. Three and a half hours outside of the city might sound like a lot of distance for you. When you're in your car, driving two hours or driving three hours, the difference is it's, it's really negligible. People have already gotten into their cars or you've already gotten into your car and you're making that drop. I do think that three hours outside of the city is the perfect spot. Three and a half is the max that you wanna get to. But here's the kicker. Since you watched the video till the end, I'm gonna give you bonus tips. The distance that you are outside of the city does not matter. What matters is two things, either your glam site, your homestead, your RV business, your tiny home business, either it is near a lot of attractions, there might be a lot of skiing, hiking, white water, rafting, whatever. I was gonna say white river, I, I don't know. I don't see color. <laughs> when people drive to your piece of land or drive to where you're at, it makes sense. It's worth a three hour drive because they can stay at your glamp site. They could stay on your land. But on top of that, there's so much to do. It's like a twofer. So at the end of the day, when there's a lot going on, people are much more likely to go out of their way. And I actually think people prefer it. People would rather go out of their way to a place they've never been to experience so many different things than to go downtown in the city and go to their local bar. That's what these types of unique stays and glamping businesses are actually all about. Now, the other option is to buy a piece of land. There might be nothing else near, but it's simple to get to. It's right off the highway. It's simple. It's easy. It's not difficult. I'm not saying buy a piece of land that's that's you have to take a ferry and then you have to fight a dragon to get to. I'm saying get something that's simple to get to. But what you do to make it worth someone's drive is you pack your land with a ton of different things to do. That way, when someone drives three hours to go to your land, it is absolutely worth it. And they don't need to go into the local town because they have everything that they need right on your piece of land. I'm talking about having an outdoor cooking station. I'm talking about having an, uh, a sauna. I'm talking about having an off-grid jacuzzi. There's a ton of fun things that you can do. Have you ever been to a piece of land or have you ever been to a glamp site with its own ax throwing? I haven't, I'd pay a little extra. That sounds like it's worth it to me. These are the things I'm talking about. So what you could do is get a piece of land with a good amount of acres for a good price and you make your land the destination. You pack it full of so many things that you're able to charge top prices. I've seen things go for $300 a night just because there was so much to do and the land was so unique. That's what I'm talking about. But there's one tip you may not be thinking of. That is that you don't even have to own land to start a glamping business, a tiny home business, or a unique stay, a unique destination business. Check the video on the screen now and save yourself 10, 20, 30, $50,000 by learning this simple trick to start a glamping business without owning land.